Well, I'd like to welcome back today Dr. Stephen Tucker. He is a conductor for the UCI Symphony. They have a wonderful program coming up on Friday, June 8th at the Irvine Barclay. Welcome, sir. Always good to see you. Thank you. Always good to be here. This is really going to be um, a fun event. And uh, you've got some, it's a jazz event. And you've got, tell me about the, uh, the um, it's, is his name Kei Agaki? Uh, Kei, I? Kei Akagi. Akagi, yes. yes. Yeah, correct. Thank who is you. a, tell me about his background. We got, we got his, uh, a photo coming up of him. Well, he's a professor in music and the head of the jazz area, but most outstandingly or significantly is that he was one of uh, Miles Davis's keyboard players. He was wow. the, the pianist with a group keyboard player in the latter years of Miles Davis's life. He's a touring musician, and I say that as much as he can be a touring musician mm -hmm. and a professor in music at the same time, which is what we all have to do. He spends a lot of his time touring the world with his trio and playing his compositions and doing recordings. But we're fortunate to have him at UCI. And so uh, a few years ago, I contacted two professors, Keikagi and Christopher Dobrian, mm -hmm. and I asked them, why don't you create something for us to play with the orchestra, to have K solo with the orchestra? So they finally came up with this composition. So this is going to be a world premiere. This has never been played before, and we're going to be doing that. That will be the central piece on the June 8th program. We'll have other things. It's not just a jazz program, right. but, but this is the heart of it. So finally, the orchestra gets to perform with a jazz soloist. Now, when I uh, hear symphony, I don't think jazz. Right. And so how do they relate to each other? Because on the program here, mm -hmm. you're going to feature George Gershwin's Cuban Overture, right. and then also Joseph Hayden's Symphony Number no. 104 called London. Right. Right. Uh, do they correlate with each other, or is it almost like two separate programs in well, one? It, it would, one would think that there is no correlation between, say, the Gershwin, the, the Dobrian and Akagi, and Haydn. Mm -hmm. But I always take the approach that when I tell my students that, you know, you have to understand what Haydn was doing during his time. He was creating new music in his ears. Uh, right. So the fact that he wrote these last, last 12 symphonies, you know, for London, mm -hmm. meant that he finally had the opportunity to play, to show his creativity in an environment that could really appreciate it. Not only that, give him an orchestra that could truly play it the way he wanted to. Yeah. Now, as far as the symphony orchestra doing jazz, there are pieces that are pseudo jazz pieces for orchestra. But when you have musicians who are creating something for the symphony to go with a jazz musician, they create the environment already okay. for us to be successful in that. So we're not trying to make the orchestra fit anything. The orchestra is just participating in a creative endeavor, somewhat like Haydn had to. Will there be some improvisation in here? There will uh, be improvisation, but let's put it this way. It is highly structured for the orchestra. Okay. So that they can be successful. And then, of course, we have one of the greatest improvisers. Yeah. Sitting out front at the piano. So there is, um, there, there's no question that we will hear some wonderful improvisation. And we actually have three sections in there where three specific student instrumentalists will play along with the piano. Oh, I bet that's going to be a thrill for them. So it's, it's one is an English horn, one's a clarinet, and one's a percussionist. So we, we do have some interesting activity going on. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, when I, um, a, a while back, I don't even know if you know how many years ago it was, uh, Ken Burns, the filmmaker, did mm -hmm. a wonderful, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, eight, ten, Ten uh, episodes, yeah. episodes yeah. of jazz in America, right. Right. which was absolutely wonderful. I'm sure people can find it online, and mm -hmm. I encourage them. But what was really very interesting is just running the the arc of how jazz progressed in this country, mm -hmm. uh, where it came from, all the different. You know, a lot of times people think of jazz, they think of maybe one style. 
maybe what you see in New Orleans, maybe right. what you see in, in, um, in Kansas, but, you know, whatever it might be. Right. But within that realm, there are so many different styles. It's Correct. incredible. And in that same vein, I mean, that's a wonderful observation you've made, that we have Gershwin on the program. Yes, right? yeah. And um, most people, you know, who don't know the history of the progression of jazz don't realize that Gershwin availed himself of all styles he could find mm -hmm. in music. He was particularly interested in jazz because he was affiliated with a lot of people who were creating jazz. Yeah. You know, the Paul Whiteman, you know, um, orchestra, um, which has come under a lot of scrutiny because, you know, they, they were in an environment where they could only accommodate certain things, mm -hmm. which excluded certain other people. Right, and right, styles, of course. Yeah, right? yeah. But Gershwin himself seemed to have a, a deep interest in understanding what that was about. Here, uh, here we have the Cuban Overture, which was originally titled Rumba. Okay, yeah. And okay. He, um, yeah. he spent two weeks in 1932 in Cuba, in mm -hmm. Havana, and heard the, the sounds, the rhythms, you know, the instrumentation, and was fascinated by it. Yeah. And decided, well, I'd like to try that, to write something that represents my impression of what that is. Yeah. Now, some might say that's some kind of jazz also, whereas others, others will just simply say it's folk music. Well, mm -hmm. what is it? It's yeah. all, the, you know. And when you look at the progression yeah. of it, of uh, you know, how, how a lot of that instrumentation, uh, of course, came from Africa mm -hmm. into the Caribbean. Yeah. And, you know, for, for obvious and sometimes not, most of the time back then, not very good reasons, of right. course, but then progressed into America. Mm -hmm. And those sounds infiltrated all the way, you could say, to, of course, um, you know, Elvis Presley and even the yeah. Beatles yeah. and on and on and on yeah. and on yeah. and on. Yeah. There is a string that you could follow. Absolutely. And, yeah. um, you know, I take it even further that I go, I, I draw a lot of um, foundation from people like Haydn because uh, most people are not aware that before mm -hmm. we even knew Bach and those things, what we call pre-Bach mm -hmm. was improvisatory. Oh, really? So, oh, absolutely. See, I, mean, I know far less about that. So <laughs> I'm, glad you're, so, I'm glad you're telling me that. So here we have now almost, as you said, your string going even further back. Yeah. And coming all the way back up to today where we're going to be able to hear somebody like Keikagi do his improvisation. That's right. going to be wonderful. Yes, yes. Uh, I want to remind people that the, uh, the folks here in Laguna Woods, uh, you can get a discount. And the, the, where you go to is arts.uci.edu forward slash Laguna. And uh, always wonderful programs uh, that uh, not only that uh, Stephen puts on, but all the different departments there mm -hmm. at the UCI Claire Turville School of the Arts. And I, I really uh, recommend checking one. This is gonna be, this is gonna be a neat one. It's gonna be fun. It's our last concert of the year and we're looking forward to it. All right, and that is Friday, June 8th at the Irvine Barclay Theater. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank, Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Good Thank to you. see you. Always Thank good you. to see you. I appreciate yes. you coming on, right. and we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. yeah,